Three waters, and I jokingly mentioned uh, ZB's Mike Hosking the other day, apparently raving this morning about how the mainstream media haven't been covering Three Waters. Too late, Mike, it's Five Waters now. They haven't been covering that either, but we have here on the platform. And what broke over the weekend was the news that as part of this ill-considered bill, they are going to insert a clause that basically prohibits the privatisation of water assets, but that provision will be entrenched. In other words, to change that provision of the law once it's passed, you would need 60% of the votes in Parliament. Um, oh, I could explain to you why that's such a bad thing, but I thought a better person to explain to us why that is such a bad thing is someone who knows something about constitutional law and maybe someone with a law degree. So our mate Graham Edgler joins us uh, on the line now. Graham, welcome to the platform. Thank you for being with us. Um, bef- you there, Graham? Yes, I am. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Yeah, okay. Before I get outside my level of competency, um, tell us how the 60% entrenchment works or works in theory and has it been used before? Entrenchment has been used before um, but in, in, in quite a different way and which, which is the problem here. Uh, it, the basic idea would be Parliament passes this law and a bit of this law says a future Parliament cannot repeal this particular section unless 60% vote in favour of that repeal uh, does mean 60% have to vote in favour of making that entrenched, which you know Labour plus the Greens at the moment do have 60% between them, and so, so that bit has been complied with. Um, but there are quite a few very unusual sits, parts of this. Uh, we have had entrenchment before. It's always been at the 75% level, which is you know sort of protecting. Which is basically saying both national major and Labour yeah. both agree. You've got to have yes. a bipartisan agreement. Yep. And it's only very, very narrow, technical almost, parts of the electoral system which are entrenched. The parts which, if someone was to screw around with them, you could almost say, oh, we don't really have a democracy anymore. You know, we've got sort of three to five, you know, depending on how you count it, you know, electorates in South Auckland and about the same in, you know, not, you know, uh, over the bridge in the harbour. So no, no, no. We're going to have we're going to have twenty electorates in the harbour and, and one big one covering all of South Auckland or something like that. And suddenly, you know, the system is so different that you know, even if there are many, many more people living in South Auckland, they can't outvote the people in in the north because you know they've got you know ten thousand people per electorate instead of you know one hundred and fifty thousand people per electorate. And suddenly, you're not really a democracy anymore, and the, the people can't vote you out. And so, the very limited sort of six bits we've got. Uh, are very much aimed at that. You know, and we've got a whole bunch of really important things, really important things that are not entrenched because they don't fit that sort of very narrow of is this protecting democracy? And, and so, does, you know, things like the right this, to life is the, entrenched. Yeah. Do these bits of the Five Waters legislation, do they represent something that should be entrenched or not? Are they contestable policy which should be open to the same 50% plus as a majority in the parliament rules. Absolutely. Yeah, this is completely, completely not the type of thing that we have ever used entrenchment for, or I would say that we ever should. And the fact that the government is using entrenchment here, I think, undermines the moral force of entrenchment that protects the electoral system and the fact that we're a democracy. You know, this is a political plaything now. You know, it's not about, you know, sort of, these are the really important things that we need to deal with. And the government can think, you know, there's lots of, you know, bits, you know, this is important. That is important that public ownership of, 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 of water infrastructure or, or any large number of other things which is important. You know, the right to an education or something like that. And none of these other things are entrenched, just this one. Graham, I and just want to focus you a little. You are it? telling me that this literally threatens our democracy. And you are no yes, rabid, I, well, you're no rabid right-wing extremist. <laughs> Thank you for saying that. But yes, I think you know, it, it undermines the entrenchment, the moral force of entrenchment that protects our democracy. If, if entrenchment is, is this now, then a future government will feel less, you know, less, you know, sort of, you know, about changing something that's entrenched for and a really good reason. If one person and does it, everyone bloody does it and we're in trouble. Graham, is this yes. a view shared across the constitutional law community? 
It seems to be. I, I don't know if it's, you know, um, you know, sort of absolute everyone, but um, I have not really seen sort of any legal academic, you know, left or right or anything like that or, or centre who has said this is good. Um, like some of you, look, the government, if it really thinks this is, this is so important, this really needs to be entrenched, you know, like, yes, you know, make that argument. Introduce a bill which does that and nothing else. Have the debate about it in a way. Not let the Green Party write an, write an amendment on Monday and vote on it on Wednesday without telling anyone. Yeah. And so, so even, if, even if this is one of those things that the government says, no, this is so important, um, you know, there's mm. another way to do it. Even if they want to make that case, one, they, ha- they didn't even try and argue this was a good idea. They just did it. Yeah. Graham, uh, after yeah, a day and a half. Which is why people say dictatorial, worst government we've ever had, etc., etc. Can they turn this around? Can they walk this back before Wednesday? Yes. Parliament isn't sitting this week. So they've got a they've got a couple of days. You know, it's not sitting till next week. You know, it's got yep. sort of ten, you know, sort of a, a, eight days or something where they can say, you know, Okay, we've rethought about this. You know, I mean, I don't think anyone even from the government has defended this. You've got a few people on Twitter Eugenie or whatever, Sage and you're sort of supporters of it. Yeah, Eugenie but, uh, Sage. No, from the government. Eugenie Sage isn't in the government. Oh, that's. A good I'm talking point. about Labour. You know, Hard to um, tell the difference. You know, with its majority. Uh, yeah. You know, in Parliament, it's like it's the. I mean, we don't even know if it was deliberate. Like that, yeah. literally, and I suspect it was, but like they haven't. You know. A couple of times over the last couple of terms, you know, the government has accidentally put something in legislation because they, you know, things, you know, voting and got confusing or something like that. Yeah. This is something they could walk back. Next time Parliament sits, they could, or next time they're going to debate this, you know, the third reading, no, no, let's send that back to uh, Committee of the Whole and, and fix this. Okay. And the what government would could you do say that. They could realise, she... oh, it was a little, little, you know... We gave it a go, and you're right. No, we should have thought about it. Yeah. We'll think about it again. Maybe we'll maybe the run on the election of we need to entrench this. You know, that would be a way of doing it. You know, this yeah. is our policy. Public ownership of water water assets is so important that we should entrench it. And then they run for election, and they win. You know, then they've got a mandate to do something like that. I but get you. This yeah. way, no. And what would you say to the prime minister were she to be listening to the platform this morning? We have no evidence that she isn't. <laughs> Um, it's not too late to, to turn back. Um, the government ha- has a week to, to, to consider it, get its ducks in a row. Yep, yeah, think about it. We can we can undo this and, uh, and and think again. And I think you know this can be fixed before before the real harm that you know the public law academics are concerned about occurs. Uh, the government has an opportunity to just step back and fix it. And I hope they do. Okay, could I say a scale of one to ten in your Adult life as a constitutional lawyer, uh, a scale of one to ten, how bad is this? Uh, I don't think it's the worst thing a government has ever done. The worst thing sort of on a constitutional law thing in New Zealand, I would have said the Harry Dinehoven election. Uh, where they passed a law that even though he'd officially resigned under the Electoral Act, we don't even need to bother with a by-election. I think that was probably worse. But this has the pos- possibility going forward to, 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 to beat that. It's not quite there yet because, well, this law hasn't even passed. And so uh, it's got the possibility, but that was something where they actually passed yeah, it. Yeah, well, Labour too, funnily to enough. Back, yeah. Well, let's, let's see if we can achieve that. Graham. I thank you very much indeed for your uh, time uh, this morning. That is uh, constitutional uh, lawyer and law expert Graham Egler. His views shared across uh, that community, if I can use that word advisedly, and as he said, the potential to be the worst thing constitutionally any government has done in his lifetime.